The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 2nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. <laughs> now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger stem, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show and Happy New Year to all of you listeners out there. Great to be with you. Let's make 2024 just simply a terrific year. And we're already going to get off to the start with some signal changes potentially by day's end. So let's begin by taking a look at those. Let's start by looking at those daily equity future contracts. So that's where we'll start. We're going to go ahead and switch our screens here. We'll be on the white background screens momentarily. We'll take things one step at a time. So the first thing that we're going to see out here, you've got the daily ES mini upper left-hand side. Let's actually populate this with our set of tools. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, but still no bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. We are trading right now or testing the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of the profile for the ES mini is at the 43, 40, I'm sorry, 43, 47, 82, 50 level. That's the exact number, 4782.50. We're about two points below that as we speak right now. It's going to be about today's close. The NQ is trading below the bottom of its profile. Oh, none of this populated. Let me just get that here with the tools. It too has a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, does not have that bearish reversal candle, but a close below the bottom of that daily profile, really two consecutive closes below 16880. Uh, that will signal to us a change in trend. Its price projection level then to the downside would be support. That's its TD9 count breakout level and that's at the 15994 level in the case of the russell 2000 or the russell 2000 that the day equity the day the dow equity future contract geez louise stevie will get it out of his mouth i promise you now what is kind of hard to see here you know just simply expand out the chart i don't know that makes it any easier a little bit easier so we do have a, a new profile that is attempting to form attempting to form because well, it's attempting to form. We're using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool. Now, resistance here is at 38.040. Support or potential support, potential resistance, potential support at 37.606. There's a Rhodes to indicator signal that's been triggered. And if we get a bearish reversal candle at day's end, that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That would still only suggest to move back to at least the 37,606 level. That's where price would have to close below in order to signal a true change in trend for the Dow equity future contract. Now, the Russell itself has a Four River Evening Star candle formation. That confirmed its Rhodes momentum indicator top. Price has found support where the buy zone is at. And inside the Russell 2000, that's between 2009 and 90 basically and 2029 and we see that this morning price has pulled back all the way down to 2025 so the russell has found support the es mini is attempting to find support the nq is in a mind of its own at this stage here and the dow needs a big
bearish reversal candidate to confirm a bottom and it's got at least close below 37606 to generate a change in trend signal. Now, this is not the only place that you and I look for change in trend signals. Why is that, Steve-O? Because we take a look at the cash indices as well. Sometimes they agree, sometimes they don't. Turns out this morning that even though we couldn't find those bearish reversal candles inside the daily equity future contracts, that is not necessarily the case when we take a look at the U.S. indices. In the upper left-hand side, you've got the Dow. Now, in the case of the Dow, what we have out here is a wave 7 top. That is letter G that uh, took place and was confirmed on Friday because price did not take out that high. So it does have one topping pattern. It does not have the roads meant to indicator signal. That would be the preferred top for the Dow. In the case of the S&P 5, 500, it has gap lower. Now, I do not know if that gap will get closed by day's end. If price is able to trade up to 47.52, that gap will get closed, and then we will not have a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. In the case of the NDX 100, it does have a wave number seven pattern out there, but more important is the gap to the downside. That is a bearish reversal candle. That is suggested that the NDX 100 should target 15.875. That is assuming we don't get some kind of afternoon rally and price reaches the level of 16.758, basically. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, it has a wave number seven top. It had that four river evening star pattern out there and prices below its oscillator and change line. This suggests that it has a change in trend. The same thing for the semiconductor index. The semiconductor index is gapped to the downside. That's confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. If price can take out the swing point that is trading into from December 20th, that would require a close below 4,006.69 out there. That would then signal a pullback to the 36.69 level. It's TD Nike out breakout area. In the case of the Dow Jones transports, I do not have a topping pattern it has an A to B equals CD to the upside. It has not completed that. Uh, price has lost its momentum. It is trading below that green oscillator and change line. So that suggests we could see a further retracement. The NDX 100, much like the NASDAQ composite, same set of patterns out there, the gap to the downside. And as long as price does not tick up, to the level of 14,955.37, it has generated a change in trend signal. And that would suggest a pullback to the 14,220 level. Finally, well, not really finally, but well, let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange did not gap down this morning. It does not have a bearish reversal candle. And that's what's required in order to generate a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. There is no other topping pattern that is in play right now for the New York Stock Exchange. The important thing here for the S&P 500, as we discussed earlier, earlier is that 50-day exponential moving average. We can see that price is testing that right now on my white background system. I've got that printed out at 13.94. If price is able to close above that level, that gives that change in trend signal. But don't forget that could also be generated in one day rate of change above plus 10 percent. And when we get that, that typically results into a bouncer bottom on the very next trading session. So uh, now look, here's the deal. If price closed below at 13.95 and the ES mini holds this bottom of its support level. That's the bottom of its daily profile. Again, that's number is 4782.50. If price holds that, uh, then we uh, don't have a change in trend there. We're likely, you can't bust them to the downside. We're likely to see price try to bust them to the upside. If we did that, is that, is that a real possibility? Absolutely, it's a possibility. Why? Because support will have held, resistance will have held inside the spot volatilities. And in the case of the S&P 500, only be two consecutive days to the downside that we'd be looking at there. And that's just kind of your normal two to three day knee-jerk reaction lows that can form in bullish markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We've got a couple of requests. We'll get to those momentarily. I thought uh, since the ES Mini is testing that uh, support, the bottom of that daily profile and the uh, spot volatility is testing resistance. It's 50-day exponents moving average. What we do is take a look at what's going on in the intraday for the ES Mini. And here we take a look at the uh, five-hour time frame chart. We don't have any kind of a bottom pattern. I do see an A to B equals CD. And if we got a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Gartley buy pattern. If we take a look at the ES Mini for its four-hour time frame, bar number eight is going to complete. I believe that completes at 2 p.m. That says that by the end of uh, that complete, yeah, 2 p.m. That says that by the end of the day or maybe about 10 o'clock this evening, you could get a TD9 count bottom there. Two-hour time frame chart. That needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. The 60-minute time frame chart has a roach momentum indicator signal. Uh, if at uh, 12 p.m. you get a bullish reversal candle, right now you got a piercing candle, that would suggest a rally up towards 47.92 to 47.95. The 30-minute chart has got a couple of different roads momentum indicator bottom signals out here. It's dealing with resistance, and that's really its oscillator and change line. That's at 47.84. Profile resistance is a 47.8975, so a close above that would suggest a further rally. 15-minute and 10-minute charts also have roads momentum indicator bottom pattern. So the point that I wanted to make, as of 11.19 in the morning, we've got uh, four, uh, five of the intraday charts. That's the 15, the 10, the 30, the 60, and the uh, 240 out there are signaling the potential for a bottom. We've got potential bottoms on the five hour and the two hour chart, uh, they just need those bullish reversal candles to form. So that's what's going on intraday when we take a look at the ES mini. Do not be surprised if support holds and if we get a bit of a rally out here perhaps over the next couple of days on the other hand we are moving in towards that unfavorable seasonal cycle and if the support levels fail those bottom the bottoms of those daily profiles well that could be suggesting that we at least move lower into the end of january perhaps so longer than that <laughs> 
Let's go to those uh, couple of requests that we have. And the first one coming in from Sat P. Sat P wants to buy a few shares in Saba. And the question is, where should he do that at? So let's go take a look at those charts for Saba, Cassava Sciences. Turns out that today is going to go ahead and complete a TD nine count bottom pattern. Sat. So you've got your signal to go ahead and take a long position. Now, so you buy a few shares, and we'll try to figure out, you know, whether it should be right this very second, which it might be. Um, if price closes below the low of the pattern, currently that's the low of yesterday. If we spike below that low, at any point in time, it would be the low of today. If price closes below the low of this pattern, you do not have a buy signal. And I would probably jettison those shares. And one of the reasons to jettison them is if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, you're trading inside a bearish structured profile. Typically, when you close below the center, sellers have the strength to push price back to support. In this case, here, it would be $20.49. So one potential buy area from a longer term standpoint, standpoint would be $20.49. But that means the only way we're going to get down there is this TD9 count bottom pattern on the daily time frame must fail. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, it already has a completed TD9 count bottom. Price has been consolidated with inside its profile. Last month, it found resistance at the top of that profile, and that's at 27.02. So let's take a look at a 30-minute time. Well, actually, let's do this here. You know what I did for you, Sat? I went ahead and I put those charts. I see that. Uh, I see that, Al. Thank you. Uh, I need to finish this. So first, uh, what I did for you, Sat, is I went ahead and put together um, this multi-set of time frame charts here just to see if we can get multiple signals with regard to possible buy areas for you. And if I take a look at the 195-minute chart, there's two 195-minute bars within a day. I don't have a buy signal here. On the 130-minute, we've got a TD9 count. You can see this is trading right now into resistance. That's its red oscillator and change line. So a close above 2283 should lead to a move up towards the third 2380 level. You've got a nice bottom pattern on the 65 minute chart. Price is dealing with resistance. That's up at 2326. You've got a nice roads momentum indicator bottom pattern on the 30 minute time frame chart. Resistance up at 2320. Support is between 2256 and uh, 2277. And we're trading just about that area right now. At a 15-minute time frame chart, nothing there to really assist us other than price did get back as we came in that last 15-minute period, tested support, the bottom of its profile at 2251. So you're basically in the buy zone, if you will, right about now. That 130-minute chart uh, might be the one that you'd wait for. Um, again, even if you get a close above this oscillator and change line, and again, right now, that's printing out at 2283. That doesn't mean you don't have any battles up ahead because you would. One at 2326 and one at 2380. But you do have that buy signal on that daily time frame. So I hope that helps you out, Seth. Thanks much for writing in. Let's go out to uh, Jim in Long Island. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, Happy New Year. I'm looking for Palantir. I don't know if we're going to close the gap. So we got Fibonacci retracements. What do you think? All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get those charts here populated. I went ahead and put those on this multi-set of time frame chart. So are you in this? Are you looking to get in this? Are you short this? Tell me what you're doing there. Well, I basically day traded on a one-minute chart, and I buy whenever it gaps up over the one-minute chart, I buy it. But I don't know. It looks like we're going to go down to $14, but I'm not sure. That's what I'm calling it. Got it. Okay. So first, if we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame looks to me like it could be setting up an A to B equals CD to the downside. And that would actually take us beyond the $14 mark. So the B point out here that it's dealing with today is from the trading session, Jim, of December the 6th. That swing point did volume of 96 million shares. So far today, this has done 20 million shares in two hours of trading. If we take 20 times three, just you know, give an approximation, that'll get us to about 60 million shares. So 60 million is taken out 96. So it's taking out that swing point with light volume. Now, even if it takes that with light volume, that does not mean that it won't go complete the A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. If it does take it out with volume, it just simply increases the likelihood that that is an outcome. The one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. So just closing below the swing point will generate or trigger that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. That one-to-one -one price projection would take us down into the prior swing point that would get us back towards the November 1st swing point. And that's between the range, Jim, of between uh, at the low at 1448 and the high at 1496. So that's where it looks like it's headed back to as we speak right now. Now, that's on the daily time frame. Before I take a look at any other time frames, do you have any question about that? 
No, it sounds so right. There's a gap there. Um, you know, if I take a look at the daily chart here for Palantir, let's see. There's, um, yeah, I see that. I see that big gap for sure. There's probably all kinds of gaps. I mean, we can say there's a gap because there is from back in May of 2023. Now that's never been filled. Maybe that'll get filled. So uh, yeah, that's a you know that's an area for sure. But what we'd also want to do is take a look at what else is going on in any of the other time frame. So for example, the next level of support for Palantir on the weekly time frame is at 1623. On the monthly basis, the next level of support is down at the uh, 1502 level. The two hour, the, not the two hour, the, the 195 minute chart has triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. If on that time frame that were to generate a bullish reversal candle, the same for the 130, that would tell us that we're headed higher. The 65 minute chart is going to complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. It will do that at exactly 1140. So we've got about another 14 minutes or so for that. What should unfold there, Jim, is a rally up mm -hmm. into about the 1715 level. But watch today's close. If it does close below that swing point from December 6th out there, with or without volume, that's at 17.05. You're likely to get an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. You're welcome to hold on through this break. We're going to it in about five seconds. If not, thanks so much for calling. And we'll look forward to speaking with you again soon. You, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back up. 
Well, folks, let's take a look at a couple of requests that have come in. The first one is from is to take a look at Apple. It's for uh, John inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Apple right now. Gap down below a swing point. That's a swing point from back on December the 27th. That swing point did volume of 48 million shares. So far in today's trading, we're at 25. So it's got the volume, especially if it keeps up at this pace. So let's go take a look at A to B equals CD to the downside. It's price projection. Now, in the case of Apple, it does have a Rhodesman to indicator top. It has a wave number seven top out there and now today it's got the a to b equals cd to the downside so the one one price projection is about where we're trading right now which gets us into about the 186.60 level uh this retracement here the speed of c retracement certainly maybe i don't even know if it's a 0 0.382 retracement uh, let's assume that it is at this stage of the game what you'd be looking for is a bullish reversal candle the question really from john c is where are the support levels so the first support level is really at the top of the weekly profile well, the top of the weekly profile, and this is a gap to the downside. I don't know if it will continue to be a gap at week's end. If it does, that confirms the Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The first level of support, John, is at 183.27. If price were to close below that, then the next area of support becomes the 172.09, 174.33, and even 170.12. Those would be the areas. If uh, Apple gives up the uh, support level on its monthly time frame. That's at the 186.85 area. Then that would be suggesting that price should run all the way back to 147.01. So those are the levels of support that we've got for Apple. Let's try to figure out what's going on in an intraday time period here. See if there's any signals there. And on a 30-minute time frame, what do we have here? What do we have? We certainly have an A to B equals CD to the downside that has been completed. We had a bullish hammer candle that completed at 1130. We're getting a bit of follow through right now. Now, this may just result in a counter trend move. And that counter trend move in the case of Apple, John, should take us up towards 189.22. I have to say towards because that number is going to change as price moves up and down. That's the oscillator and change line for that time frame. If, in fact, price was able to close above that area, then we'd be looking at a move towards 191 to 192. Now, that's the 30-minute time frame. The oscillator and change line is going to be messed up as I change times here because I've got it specifically set to that 30-minute time frame, just looking for other possible bottom patterns. Here on the 65-minute time frame, and this candle here is going to complete at 1140, I believe, so we've got about seven minutes there. This is confirming a buy the D-point pattern. At the moment, it has a bullish piercing candle, maybe seven minutes minutes from now that goes away i don't know let's take a look at the 130 minute time frame chart see what kind of signal we have here intraday we've got nothing there let's take a look at the 195 minute uh, time frame see if there's any signal there and there is not so it's really back to that uh, 30 it's back to the what yeah it's back to the 30 the 65 and the 130 minute time frame charts for you to monitor out there. But it does suggest we should see a rally. At least we've got the bottom signals intraday with regard to Apple to suggest that that is a likely outcome. So I hope that helps you out both with regard to support levels and resistance areas on any rallies out there. And uh, that's what we've got. So thanks much for uh, starting us off in 2024. Actually, it was Jim that started us off in 2024. Let's go to our next request. This is coming in from uh, Dano to take a look at the uh, GDX out there. In the case of the GDX, what do we know about it? Well, we know that it is consolidating with inside its profile levels. Those profile levels are between 3046 that is support and resistance up at 3162 what else do we know we know on the weekly time frame that price found resistance at the top of that weekly profile did that two weeks ago that was at 3236 uh if price were to close below 3046 the area of support in the case of the gdx would be at 29.99 on a monthly basis the gdx has support at 29.56 and 30.09 Let's take a look at what's going on on an intraday basis out here. And on an intraday basis, this is the 30-minute time frame. The 30-minute time frame has a wave number seven bottom out there. That so far has led to a rally towards its oscillator and change line. That is currently printing at 30.83. Even if price can get above that, 30.90 becomes resistance. Its real resistance level on any kind of concerted rally would be between 31.26 and 31.34 out there. But you do have a bottoming pattern for that. That time frame. Do we have that for a 65 minute time frame? Excellent question. I don't know, but we're going to find out the answer. And the answer is they have, there is a 10 minute 
uh, 10 minutes. There is a 65 minute TD9 count bottom, which would only be negated with a close below 3068. So you may want to watch the 3068 level out there for the GDX. So you've got two bottoming signals at least intraday out here, and price is consolidating with inside of support. The other thing that really needs to be considered when trading the GDX is certainly the price of gold and what gold is doing. And the reason for that is because of their directional correlation. So let's take a look at what gold is doing. And we can see here that uh, what gold did earlier in the day, it's got a nice TD9 count Roseman indicator top for its five hour time frame. And what did price do? It sought out support. And where was support? Support was at 2065.50 and 2070 even Stephen. That was the TD9 count breakout level and the bottom of that profile. Gold has held support for the four hour time frame, which has a TD9 count bottom. It's held that breakout level 2069.40 as well. What else do we have here? Steve would have to, Stevie would have to say, not much. But on the daily time frame, we can see that price right now is dealing with oscillator and change line support. And that's probably the keyest level of the day, Dano. And that level here, this will probably assist you with regard to the GDX. Right now, that oscillator and change line is at 2072. If price were to close below 2072, odds would favor a move back towards 2041, 2029 area out there. And if that unfolds, well, we're likely to see the GDX also move to the downside. Of course, it would depend upon when that move lower took place. It was after hours, and then it rallies from there because it finds support. Well, then that wouldn't be the case. But that's what I see when I take a look at the GDX specifically, combine that with the uh, gold contract out there. And so we know that gold is trying to make at least intraday bottoms out here, and it's testing a daily key level of support. That's its oscillator and change line. So, Dano, thanks so much for the request, and happy new year to you. Dan inside the Tiger's Den would also like to take a look at uh, – SND. So let's fire that up on our screen out here. It'll take just a moment for SND to populate. And SND is smart sand out there. So it's having a nice rally trading right now at about the 206 level. It is trying to take out its TD9 count breakdown resistance area. That is at 203. A close above that is going to suggest a further rally. The further rally is where the defense is at. And you've got defenders at 209 and defenders at 217. You clear 217 and you're off to the races. Those races should take us back towards its swing high. And I'm looking at the weekly swing high now, and that's from the week of September 22nd. And that would be between the range of at the low at 229 and at the high of 248. When I come back to the daily time frame chart for sand, we can see a nice TD9 count bottom that completed on December 13th. On December 13th, there was also a wave number seven bottom that was confirmed on the very next trading session, December the 14th. So you had a nice bottom out here, Dan. Price close above 203 today. You've got a change in trend signal, but you still have those battlegrounds up above. So I hope that provided you with what you were looking for. If not, let me know, and I'll make sure I get to that information. Steve Rhodes with TFN and the Dow. All the U.S. indices are trading to the downside, not so with the sectors inside the S&P 500. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got uh, three more requests in the system. One's take a look at the euro. We're going to do that right now. The New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator and the seasonality for the semiconductors. If you've got a question as well, go ahead and get them in. Steve at TFN.com, 877-927-6648 uh, or any ping inside the Tiger Sense. So we take a look at the euro out here. What do we know about the euro? Well, we know that I'm going to open up the monthly time frame chart. If you want to see a trend line that can act as both support and resistance out here, the euro has got it. We're looking at the monthly time frame chart. Peter, if you just simply draw a line from the low of the trading session of January of 2017, and then you attach that to the low out here of March of 2020, what you'll get is that nice little trend line. We can see that that is really held up as resistance. The only time it didn't really act as resistance, we closed just above it by a smidgen. That was back in April of 2023. Again, this is a monthly time frame chart. So we know that resistance is holding. Support is also holding. That's at that red oscillator and change line. That's at a buck oh six right now. That's longer term. That's a monthly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows a beautiful TD9 count bottom that took price right up to where the rally should have ended. And that was at the TD9 count breakdown resistance. That was it. That was a strong resistance line. Turns out on the monthly basis, it is absolutely strong resistance. On the weekly basis, it too was strong resistance. Now, that's at 1.1065. Now, what we should see is price pull back to test support. That's that green oscillator and change line. That's at 1.088. If price were to close below that, that would give us a signal of a further retracement. The daily time frame does still have an A to B equals CD pattern. However, Price is now below its green oscillator and change line that increases the odds of a further retracement. In order to really understand those odds, we need to see what's going on intraday. On the 30 minute time frame, what we have is a negated TD9 count bottom. But is there an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside, Peter? I don't know. But as we open up the charts, we do. And the answer to that question is yes. So we can say is there is an intraday by the D point pattern. Uh, the potential for a wave number seven pattern to form over the course of the next 45 minutes or so. And your resistance area out here is certainly its red oscillator and change line. But if price can move above that, 1.097 would be the target. 1.103 would be the final target to the upside on a rally. That's the 30-minute time frame chart. Turns out that on the hourly time frame chart, you could, don't know if we will, but you could get a TD9 count bottom. But regardless of that, if we had an A to B on the 30-minute, we've got the A to B equals CD pattern on the 60-minute time frame. 
So therefore, if 15 minutes from now we still have a bullish reversal candle, price should rally towards 1.097. Same thing on the 120-minute time frame chart. It's rally target, 1.099. The four-hour time frame chart, price pulls back, tests its second breakout level at 1.0939. So we're at an area of support for its four-hour time frame. The same is true for the five-hour time frame. So longer term, it looks like the euro is pretty much French toast out there. That is, unless it could take out that trend line we looked at the monthly time frame and its TD9 count breakdown resistance area at 1.1065. Um, you should get some type of short-term rally because of the 67% weighting, I believe, inside of the U.S. dollar index. That would suggest the U.S. dollar index should pull back a bit. That would suggest what? That gold should rally a bit, the GDX as well. It kind of fits in line, I believe, with what we have spoken about thus far. So, Peter, I hope that provided the information you were looking for inside of the euro. If not, please let me know what that is, and I'll be happy to get that to you. Peter had a secondary question. For that, we're going to change screens. For that, we're going to go take a look at the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. That's a mouthful, and somebody might say, what the Sam heck? is that, Steve-O. What that is, is that measures the advanced decline oscillator is measuring the advanced decline line for the New York Stock Exchange. Just out of curiosity, we can turn that on as well, just see what that's doing. I don't know where we finished the year out here, but let me see if I can go find that. Well, I know I can find it. It's just going to take a moment or two. Here is our advanced decline line. That should now open up in panel number two. So we were not at a new all-time high. By the way, the all-time high for the advanced decline oscillator back in 2021 out there. But we are on the rise out here. I don't see a, uh, I don't see that. But anyways, the advanced decline line allows us to create an oscillator. And an oscillator is the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average for it. And that's what you see in panel number three out here. And what you'll see is that price right now is sitting still above zero. It's at seven is the reading. Above zero tells us that buyers are the ones that are still in control. If we close below zero, does that tell us that sellers are in control? It does if we close below it uh, tomorrow. But first, we have to close below it today. So you got the ES Mini, excuse me, sitting in support with a number of intraday bottom signals. Spot volatilics, dealing with resistance. That's a 50-day expense moving average. And the advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange still in the hands of buyers out there. Hmm, something to think about. All right, so that took care of those two things. Mr. Bill would like to take a look at the seasonality for the semiconductor index. So let's take that out. Let's take a look at that. Mr. Bill, this is ignoring the seasonality on day one of 2024 because we can see that January is the second most over a period of 29 years. January has been the most successful trading month, the most successful trading month for the semiconductors when they are really in full swing with moves to the upside. That is in the month of November. We can see that by looking at the bottom right portion of the uh, semiconductor index seasonality chart sponsored by the folks from Seasonex. Great set of tools out here. So this suggests, Mr. Bill, that the semis should continue, quite frankly, to really rally up into about the time frame of July. July is typically when the semis form their high out there. There's another high that comes in in that uh, June time frame. But the ultimate high typically doesn't come in until that July time frame. And what we are supposed to have is some type of rally up into that. Now, what you and I know, you didn't ask about the semiconductor stocks, but we should go take a look at those just simply because you asked about this. So to do that, let me see if I can get those fired up. I might already have them fired up. Or did I delete that? Oh, Stevie, did you do that? Oh, man. Hold on. Hold on. We get back to one other spot. Here we go. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, I put Palantir there. Why did Stevie do that? Oh, that was a mistake. But we're going to put the semis up there anyway. So just give me a moment to uh, get this going. We'll go ahead and switch the screens out here. We're going to go take a look at what the signals are telling us about the semiconductor. And this, we took a look at what the seasonality pattern was. We can see, at least for day one, that it's not following along. So let's go ahead and we'll move over to the white background screens while these things populate. 
The upper left-hand side is going to be the monthly time frame. The next to that is going to be the weekly time frame. So the weekly time frame says as long as this week price closes above the close of bar number five, seems like it should be able to do that. 37.74.17, by the way, is that number. Then we are going to get a TD9 count top. Now, we've already gapped down. That would confirm a weekly Rogemint indicator top. The last time we got a confirmed Rogemint indicator top was back here. That was in July, July of what well, was really August the 4th out there on a weekly basis. Remember, we saw the... Uh, seasonal pattern for the semis and typically they form that high in September uh, the uh, July time frame where price moves lower into the November time frame and boy last week was to the T out there so the weekly chart though the signal here Mr. Bill looks like TD9 count or Rhodes Mintum indicator top with 39.45 being the price target and on the daily time frame that price target could get us all the way back to 36.69 Steve Rhodes with TFNN We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. .com. Welcome back, well, folks. So let's finish out the show. We've uh, taken care of all the requests out there. Uh, why don't we go take a look at what's going on under the covers inside of the NQ, just simply by taking a look at its intraday charts out there. The NQ leading thinks the downside still trading below that key level of support, which is the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 16,880. So that's the number you're going to want to certainly pay attention to uh, today. Here we've got the 60-minute time frame chart. And in less than six minutes, 
this candle that's currently in place is going to go ahead and complete. What this is at the moment is a bull sash candle. Looks like it's going to retain that bullishness that it needs for the next uh, six minutes. Of course, things could change out there. As long as it retains that, you've got a buy the D point pattern. Now, that buy the D point pattern should result in a rally up towards its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 16,847. Remember, the bottom of that profile is 16,880. So want to keep a track of what happens, certainly on this time frame. There's other bottom signals as well. We take a look at the NQ. The 30-minute uh, chart has a Rhodesman to indicator signal. Now, the cool thing about this, and it's important to put together multiple time frames here. It's kind of like you're a quarterback and you're checking things down. And here we can see on the 30-minute time frame, you have a beautiful Rhodesman to indicator bottom. That confirmed at 11.30 when that bull, bull sash candle. And now we've got price dealing with resistance. So if it's only a counter trend move, price will find resistance at that 16,786 level out there. We're trading above the high of the prior candle, not unless we close below the current candle out there. Can we say that while well, resistance is held and price is getting ready to pull back? If price can close above 16,786, that suggests they move up to 16,835 or even 16,889. Again, remember, 16,880 is that key level inside of the NQ. That is the bottom of that daily profile. If that that holds holy shnikes out there. And with regard to other intraday uh, signals, well, you've got that 15 minute Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom, 16,800 is a resistance level. And on the uh, 10 minute chart, price is dealing with resistance as we speak right now. And that's at the top of its profile. And that's at the 16,778 level. Folks, great to begin 2024 with you. Let's make this the most fantastic year possible. Let's work together like a team. Team TFNN, or Hotel California, as we like to say. Have a terrific Tuesday, folks. I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday. Take care.